Oh, magic conch shell, what do we need to do to get out of the kelp forest? Nothing. The shell has spoken! As media criticism has become overall more mainstream, many of its terms and words have also entered the vocabulary of the everyman. That is a good thing. More people thinking critically about the stories they consume and adding onto the critical canon of humanity is welcome. However, like with anything that becomes popular, certain parts of it have been misused and misinterpreted to the point of barely having any meaning at all anymore. Words like character development and world building get thrown out constantly with no real rhyme or reason, just because they sound cool and convincing and you always think you know what they mean just based on the word alone, which is often not the case. And while maybe not as infamous as the previous two examples, another case is the term that will be today's topic, contrivance. You will often hear budding critics say that this plot is contrived or that element is a contrivance, with them rarely going into more detail on the nature of the word and the meaning itself. So I thought that today we could talk about this term and its implications, and try and understand it through the use of the one series I'm knowledgeable on, you've seen it in the title, you know exactly what this is about. It's probably best to start by simply understanding the on-paper definition of the term contrivance. According to Merriam-Webster, contrivance is defined as an artificial arrangement or development in the context of literature and storytelling. As with most basic definitions of literature terms, this is super vague and tells us basically nothing. To make it a bit more detailed, a contrivance can be a story element or progress whose service to the work seems so detached from the logic of the fictional reality or diegesis that it begins feeling artificial or forced, being only there to progress the plot without actually serving any other purpose and without tying into the logic of the fiction itself. One of maybe the most unanimously agreed upon and infamous cases of a contrivance in anime can be found for example in Code Geass. Spoilers for Code Geass! When Lelouch's mind control ability just so happens to activate in the exact moment when he makes a joke about ordering a genocide on Japan to the one person who could actually do it. This is generally understood as contrived because it hinges a pretty serious plot development on an incredibly fringe and unlikely coincidence that isn't really made more reasonable by the plot, but is genuinely only dependent on pure randomness. As you can imagine, this isn't exactly an elegant or satisfying way to progress your plot and can quickly devalue your story if relied on too much. However, just like any literary trope, a contrivance isn't inherently bad. Overreliance and careless use of it have rightfully given it the reputation of being generally detrimental and amateurish, but that doesn't have to be true and it isn't an intrinsic trait of the trope itself. A literary trope is just a tool, and how people use it is what gives it its quality. Ask yourself this, how likely is it that any story ever just starts? What are the chances of just the right person stumbling into this exact story? Answer is, it's not likely at all and you could call it a contrivance. You could go as far as to say that any story ever happening is contrived because the real world isn't filled with magic plots to save the world. But you wouldn't judge a story negatively just because it starts, right? Of, of course not, everything has to start somewhere, somehow, an inciting incident is necessary for a plot to get into motion. This might be an odd example, what we can glean from this is that contrivances are interlinked with the notion of necessity. Fiction is, by its very definition, not reality, and can therefore take advantage of that by ignoring or circumventing certain probabilities and limits imposed onto the real world. At times, a story must progress or develop an idea in a way that might be incongruous of what would happen if that situation were real. So the conversation about contrivances expands from just the question of how likely is it to also encompass how necessary is it. To return to our example from Code Geass, not only is Lelouch's eye activating in that exact second incredibly unlikely, it also really didn't need to happen. At this point, the story had reached a point of peace and required a new instigator of conflict between Area 11 and Britannia. But there are so many moving parts and characters in the story that could have done that instead of the random activation scene so it just ends up being dumber. 
because it is both unlikely and unnecessary. With these descriptors, we have essentially charted a spectrum of potential contrivances between how likely and how necessary they are. Now, let's just use this to look at three examples from Meyer Academia to see how differently these contrivances can be made and how differently they can influence a story. The three examples I've chosen will hopefully illustrate a decent overview of the range of variety of contrivances to be found in most stories. The first example is literally one of the first things that happens in this series, All Might meeting Deku and giving him one for all. This moment has had loads of discussion around it, most of it regarding whether Deku earned it, and all of it stupid. However, one thing that is hard to deny is that this entire incident is, well, contrived. The chances of Deku meeting the one man he admires above all in a dense Japanese metropolis are not exactly high. Sure, All Might does have a reason to be in town, but that town is so big and has so many different people in it that him running into Midoriya is basically not guaranteed at all. What brings him together being the sludge villain doesn't make it any more likely. For the villain to just so happen to run by All Might's shopping tour and then lead him directly to Deku in a random tunnel is, well, still not very likely. This is, by all means and purposes, by definition, a contrivance. But remember what we said. It's not just about likelihood, but also about necessity. How necessary is this contrivance? And, well, the answer is very. This is literally the inciting incident of the story, the start of this journey. Without this, My Hero Academia would simply not happen at all. As we said before, any story ever happening is, in the realm of reality, very unlikely, but because fiction isn't constrained by reality, it can produce stories of all kinds. This is one of those cases where, yes, it is somewhat contrived, but it doesn't really affect the quality of the story, because without it, the only quality the story would have is absence and non-existence. Additionally, this contrivance actually serves a secondary purpose, namely to catalyze Deku's self-doubt. Throughout the story, he repeatedly wonders if he really was worthy, considering he just got lucky to meet All Might and trying to live up to the luck that was bestowed to him. This luck is crafted into his character arc of seeing himself as worthy, which makes this contrivance a lot more justified, since it reverberates through the character and is crafted into the character arc itself. So what we have here is a contrived development that justifies its existence through necessity and additional context, which I think is good and gives it a sort of multi-purpose, which allows it to be a lot more acceptable. Because again, would you fault a story for starting itself? I know I wouldn't. Moving on from an inoffensive, elegant contrivance, we arrive at my second example, which is much more controversial. During the sports festival, Deku is pitted against Shinso, who has the ability to brainwash people. Once someone answers a verbal question of his, they are put completely under his control and can only be woken up by a strong enough physical shock. Sure enough, Deku gets caught by the power and, with no one in the arena to help him, seems certainly doomed. Until, suddenly, the magic will of One For All awakens and allows him to break his fingers, waking him from the brainwashing. This is a pretty incidental moment, but kinda shocking in how sudden it is. And it is pretty clearly something you could reasonably call a contrivance. One For All has never done something like this up to now, and for it to happen in the exact situation where nothing else could have saved Deku is pretty convenient. The explanation we get somehow makes it worse. All Might says that this intervention is a sign of Deku making One For All his own. But in the literal next arc, Deku learns how to use One For All more efficiently with full cowling, which surely is a bigger step to making it his own. So why did the magic One For All dudes show up for when he learned how to only break fingers instead of arms, but not when he learned how to use the quirk continuously in his own way without harming himself? It's pretty clear that this was a one-time only occurrence meant to solve a situation that was otherwise unsolvable. And while you could say that this contributes to its necessity, I'd argue that Horikoshi putting himself into a situation where random ass solution like this was necessary is in of itself a pretty clumsy and inelegant narrative move. However, this is of course neglecting the elephant in the room. Spoilers for the My Hero Academia manga! This incident actually comes back up and gets recontextualized by what happens in the joint training arc, where it is revealed that One For All contains the echoes of the consciousnesses of all previous users, some of which are strong enough to influence Deku. 
This retroactively turns this event in the sports festival into a case of establishment and foreshadowing, which ends up giving it more purpose. So what we end up with is a case of a contrivance that is relatively clumsy and quite artificially convenient, but is somewhat salvaged by the additional context and purpose given to it later on. I'd say this is perfectly middle of the road in terms of quality. It's kinda stupid, but it receives enough additional shit to not be detrimental in the long run, as the long run ends up justifying it. Which is something I cannot say for the final example, arguably one of the dumbest conveniences in all of Hiroaka, and something I'm willing to bet you completely forgot about. It happens in the forest arc, when the vanguard action squad moves in to abduct Bakugo. As the fighting starts, Koda, a young child staying with the heroes at the time, finds himself on his favorite cliffside when he is ambushed by one of the villains who is looking for a vantage point. That villain is revealed to be Muscular, who just so happens to be the man who killed Koda's parents long ago. To recap, just so we're clear, Koda, after the death of his parents, goes to live with the Pussycats, on whose property he chooses this random rock as his favorite, where he just so happens to be when the attack starts. Muscular, after killing Koda's parents, joins the League, becomes part of the Vanguard, and instead of staying on the vantage point he already had together with the other squad, chooses to find another one, ending up on the same one as Koda. These two characters with a connection end up independently running into each other. This is a massive contrivance, since neither of them sought each other out. There's no real reason why they meet, it just happens. The chances of this are insanely low, there is just too much shit that has to line up for this to happen. But okay, likelihood isn't everything. As we said, as two people meeting isn't necessarily a bad contrivance, that was literally the beginning of this video. So what is the purpose of this? What narrative function does contrivance serve that can override its overall convenience? How do I put this? There is no purpose. This contrivance sticks out because it literally has no reason to exist. There is no reason Muscular had to be the dude who killed Koda's parents. Koda, as a child, would be scared of the villain regardless. And while he does cry about his parents in the fight, his crying is less about how could you, Muscular, kill my parents, and more about did my parents suffer like this as well? Hell, Deku beating Muscular doesn't even carry a notion of revenge or justice either, because none of it is ever brought up, and Koda doesn't seem to be really caring about avenging his parents. So this contrivance that, at face value, exists to construct artificial emotionality doesn't even manage to do that because he could have achieved the same effect by having Muscular be just some villain. Koda would still be afraid, Koda could still cry out about the pain his parents must have endured, and Deku beating Muscular would still be a heroic victory. Of course, this is a super insignificant detail, I do realize that. That doesn't really derail the story or anything, but it's just baffling to me how pointless and contrived this actually is. It's just such a random thing that has no reason to exist, and that doesn't actually contribute to anything. This is a perfect example of an author trying to inflict an emotional bit of burden on the reader and on the characters, but failing to do so because that emotionality isn't earned and isn't founded on any real logic. And plus, again, the fact that he's the one who killed Koda's parents doesn't end up mattering all that much. Again, the only time Koda actually brings it up, you could replace with him just talking about his parents regardless. He's a child, he's emotional, he's wondering if his parents suffered as much as Deku is doing right now against Muscular. That can be completely detached from the fact that Muscular actually killed his parents. So it's overall just very clumsy and very amateurish and easily one of the dumbest contrivances in the entire series. So, with these three examples charted, I hope I gave you a cheeky little overview of the different ways contrivances can pop up and influence a story. Naturally, you could argue in favor or against all of these, that's just how fiction is, but hopefully this little perspective of mine has at least illustrated the term contrivance a bit. Now, if you want to, you can go in all the other series you like, watch, and are knowledgeable on, and see if you can find other examples like this. The beauty of fictional criticism is that you can basically just say anything about anything and just see how much sense it makes. Go into your favorite show, try and find a contrivance, and try seeing if you can justify it, if you can even argue it to be a contrivance. 
exercise this a bit. Try and see how much you can gleam out of your favorite pieces of media by using these terms and these concepts. At the end of the day, we analyze because we want to gain a deeper understanding not just of fictional works, but of the way our minds function and of the way we construct narratives, because that is indicative of how we as humans work and tell. Thank you so much for watching, like and sub and ring the bell for more content, you know how it is. You can support me on Patreon or buy our brand new merch, as well as catch me streaming on Twitch occasionally if you're interested and if I'm feeling up to it. Stay safe. Take care, bye bye.